What's going on, mi gente? Just a couple days left until the Comebol qualifiers start. Let's get to it. What's going on, mi gente? Today, I am joined by journalist Jaime Macias to talk about Ecuador and what's going to happen to them in this new Comebol qualifying campaign. Jaime, how's it going? Thank you for being with me. How are you doing, Diego? Pleasure talking to you, as always. Um, It's crazy because we we just two days away from starting the 2026 World Cup cycle. How do you feel about it? And how do you feel about the new format? Um, I, you know, I feel, and probably I'm wrong, and, and, and if you have a different feeling, let me know, that it's, uh, that, that in South America, there is like a little bit of a lack of expectation toward the qualifier because everybody thinks that they're going to go through with six spots plus a playoff. Um, and we have historically have been saying that in South America, always a team that should be in the World Cup was being eliminated. So now with this extended number of teams, like everybody's confident that they're going to go through. But but news, there are going to be three teams that are going to not being able to play, not even the playoffs. So um, I think that the expectation is going to start growing once the tournament starts. It's yeah, it's been it's been tough for me as well because I, I at first when I when I heard about the new format, I thought it takes away for a little bit of uh, from that challenge or that mystique that 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 uh, Comebol was the toughest qualifiers in the world. But then I thought, yeah, you have you have three teams that are gonna stay out of it, and I think it may be even more of an embarrassment, right, to say I'm one of the teams that that stayed off that that didn't make it to yeah. the World Cup. And I was checking a stat that it's curious. Um, since Conmebol plays uh, the the eighteen match qualifier, which means like everybody plays everybody home and away, since France nineteen ninety eight, the only two teams that have never end a qualifier in a spot that would not qualify them directly. What I mean is like the only two teams that have never finished seventh or worst are Argentina and Brazil. So that give us like a side of how difficult it's is going to be. Um, and the other thing is, if we if we check um, the the sixth position, yeah, the sixth position, like the the team that didn't make the playoff on the previous World Cups, like we have like two times it was goal average, four times it was a one point, so. Even though uh, you can feel like the, the gap between third and, and six historically has been around three points, not not more than that. And, and that's exactly why it's like, I, I feel like it's so competitive. It's it's one of the best, if not the best in the world. And, and it's going to be crazy to see how it comes down to. Now moving on to Ecuador. Ecuador, uh, they made it to the World Cup in the last cycle, right? Ending in fourth place. Um, I think they did very well. I think they have a talented squad. What changes come now from from the last campaign to this one? The biggest change is a, is a manager, a uh, European manager. Uh, Felix Sanchez Blas, he managed Qatar in the past World Cup. Um, Ecuador is a European-based team, something that didn't start that way for the previous qualifier. Ecuador and the, qualifying, the, the qualifiers being a European-based team, but didn't start that way. The, the players were transferred to Europe within the, the 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 development of the of the qualifier so that's uh that's something that is different um how is the team gonna react to an european manager or how does an european manager is gonna uh perform in a qualifiers that's the big question right there is only once uh, a european manager qualified to the world cup with a south american team was uh javier Ascargorta managing bolivia we've seen uh, how uh, Kados struggle with uh, the um, Colombian national team. So it's it's like a big question. I'm not a, a septic to it, but it, it I think it's one of the big big talking points. Um, and um, and the the debate that the more European based squad you have, it's a bigger debate in countries like Mexico or or Ecuador. Is the altitude an advantage for the home team or it's an advantage for the away team? And, and I think that Ecuador qualified for the World Cup last um, last summer, uh, no, last, last winter, we're used to say last summer, last winter, being one uh, doing one of their best away qualifiers in their history and one of their worst home 
qualifiers in their history. So that's like a big question of it's playing in Quito an advantage for Ecuador or it's not anymore because those players are not up to the altitude. So I think those are the, the biggest questions um, on regards on Ecuador before the start of the qualifiers. That's a good point. That's a very good point. Um, you mentioned the new coach, right? Um, what are your expectations for him and what are the people saying in Ecuador? Well, there's like a, a big debate because of the two Inter Miami players not being called up. I think that, uh, and for me, that's a big question on the qualifiers, right? Why, why are the, the two best players, uh, the, the two Inter Miami players, not not called up? There is an angle, an explanation. Uh, the, the 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 big explanation is like, even though Dixon Arroyo is performing. Uh, extraordinarily well with Inter Miami. That's probably the, the 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 part of the field with Ecuador is more cover. Is it's a, the 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 most expensive player in Premier League history plays in that position in Ecuador, which is Moises Caicedo. And the other thing is that that uh, Felix Sanchez, his teams are designed for the goals to come from the wings, not from the forward, right? And I think that Campana is a better forward as a goal scorer. Than um, than uh, Rodriguez, but uh, the, the 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 player that is called up plays better in this system of holding center backs to open the wings from the guys that are coming from the sides. That's my explanation, and um, he didn't want to bring Campana in to create a debate of why he's not playing him. Right? He 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 tried to take out of the discussion or or all the noise outside the field by not calling him and have that discussion before the games that being a constant narrative during the games around the lineup so that's the explanation right um i don't know if i go in another direction that what you asked me for no 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 i think that i think i think that sums it up sums it up exactly kind of what his style is what he's looking for in this team and this maybe new look ecuador now, yeah. and, and the other thing with his style, and for me, is the biggest concern is like he's a high press manager. You cannot press high in the altitude if your team is not fitted to do it. Right. And uh, there are two ways, right? Either he changes it or his team is going to be exhausted and, and run over by the opponent because nobody's going to go to Quito to press high, to, to press high against Ecuador. So they are going to take advantage of Ecuador uh, getting exhausted. So more than how he plays against Argentina, my questions will start on, on how he plays at home. And, and, and you know, Alfaro was never able to, to, to develop a strong home team. Right, right. The top score, look, the top scorers for Ecuador at home, well, not at home, in Quito, because they, they played two games in Guayaquil, the top scorers for Ecuador in Quito were the center backs, set pieces. And and exactly, that's exactly why it, it it's so tough to see how this is gonna or how this will work, right? With with the European base squad now that you mention it. Now going into Alfaro, since you mm -hmm. mentioned Alfaro, um in the I guess the case that's that's going on with him and the federation the money he's owed saying he's going to take the the federation to to tas um you know what what are your thoughts on this what's what's going on exactly so that people can kind of know more i i have no idea because the the real the real um arguments it's something in this small letter of the contract right and if if we don't see the contract we don't know who is right or who is wrong Right. He, he he says the Federation owes him money. The Federation says that everything is paid. And we don't know what his contract says on what he he is entitled to receive apart from his salary or bonuses or whatever. So until we don't see that, I, I don't have an answer. And, and to tell you the truth, I really don't care. It's a bureaucratic problem between them agreed agreed it shouldn't it shouldn't it shouldn't take away from what's going on with the team and the and and the, the new coach and and the new you know process that they're going to go through 
is just a talking point, I guess. But now, since we we spoke a little on that, yeah, but well, about- you know what? And I don't know why in our countries things always have to finish th- this way. And I'm not blaming yeah. the coach or the federation. But you go to S- South America, and things always finish this way. But why can why it, it it continues to happen? It's something that amazes me. It's it's never just a handshake. Good job, well done. Yeah. On to the next. It's always sure. yeah. Yeah, there's always some. There's always a problem. There's always something happening afterwards. Yeah, it's very unfortunate, and I, I don't know if it could be societal, if it could be because of the way business is drawn up in in our countries, or we don't write the contracts right. Oh, exactly. Or it's too many loose points yeah. instead of having yeah. 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 Um, because probably both are right. <laughs> right. Exactly. How about the Ecuador starting with negative three points? How big of a deal is that for you? It's a very, for, for me, it's a very big deal. I, I think that the, the players in, in the press conference are trying to minimize it. I will do the same if I was in the squad. Like, you got to try to minimize it. But it's not a psychological, it, it will be a psychological disadvantage. It's not today. Today, it's a mathematical disadvantage, right? Um, but uh, uh, if Ecuador does not win in Argentina, which is a possibility, if you got to predict guys' score, you're probably going to say the world champions are winning their home game, right? You're going to be six points away of somebody going into the third round. And from a psychological part, it's very different when you see the table down than when you see it up. And that could derail your dynamic. Like, let's say, worst case scenario, Ecuador loses in Argentina, they're not going to be able, they, they, they're not able to beat Uruguay. You're going to be eight points away of somebody by the end of September. And that's when you start like saying, okay, we're in trouble. Um, and it's a mathematical dis- disadvantage that you can overcome. Yeah, for sure. But you start dealing with pressure and, and momentum. And there is always, there's always a team in these qualifiers, that comes out of nowhere. Like we, we got Bolivia, uh, we got Venezuela in 2014, we got Peru in the last, uh, in 2018. So it's a very little, like for example, if you ask me, who do I think they are like in a weaker position? For sure, I would say the fourth that have struggled in the last cycles, right? Venezuela, Bolivia, Chile, and Paraguay. But just because of history, I can tell you, two of those are going to perform, and I'm going to surprise us. Why? Because our region is built from players that come out of nowhere and become superstars. So we can we can talk for hours on how Chile is still relying on the old generation and they are not bringing new players and how Peru is one of the worst leagues in South America and 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 uh, how Paraguay with those big names is not gonna is not performing. Well, one of those guys is gonna is gonna uh, it, it's gonna one of those teams is gonna blend and is gonna perform. So that's where these qualifiers are unpredictable. The beauty of Commonwealth, right now. If I had to, you know, fast forwarding, if I had to, you know, pick your brain and say this is twenty, the end of September 2025, and we already know what the stable, the, the standing looks like on paper, right? This is just theoretically on paper. Mm-hmm. Where could you realistically see this Ecuador side falling? What places or? I think, I think Ecuador, it's, um, I think Ecuador is a six to eight team. I think Ecuador is one of the teams in the bubble. Um, I'm not sure if I'm saying that because of the expectations of that I have on the team or because of the minus three points and how level these qualifiers are. Because with minus three, you can, in South America, you can go from third to six. I, I think that that's, if you check, I, I, I tweeted like a, 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 a photo, I don't know, a graphic of, the position, the the points in all the qualifiers with eighteen games, uh, and you can see like three points. Apart from the top two, usually three points it can throw you from third to six. 
So that's where I think Ecuador, Ecuador sits. I, th I think that Ecuador have a lot of ifs, and the ifs are, are not connected to the talent on the squad. I think it's a very talented squad, but all these different points that I uh, bring out and, and, and uh, how level the, the rest of the region is, is what can make you be in that bubble. Now, what what teams would you say? What teams? What three teams are the ones that you're saying? You know, these are the most likely to not make it at all. I think Bolivia, for sure. I think Bolivia for sure, especially because they're they're they're. Look, I say for sure, and then when I say for sure, it says no, it's not for sure. <laughs> In my my brain, says it's not for sure, right? I think they have a. They had in the previous qualifier the, their best qualifier since they qualified for for um, the U.S. in '94. They have a great manager who had never had a chance in a national team. Their 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 talent pool have improved tremendously. So, if I say Bolivia. It's more because I think on what has happened in the recent years, the same way I would say Venezuela, not because they don't have the talent over there, right? But I really, one of my biggest, my biggest curiosities going through these qualifiers is, is uh, Gustavo Costa's under uh, managing a national team. I think that's one of the, 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 the things I really, really want to see. And let's not forget that Bolivar just uh, make a run into the quarterfinals of, of the Copa Libertadores. So... The other thing, like this qualifier, it's a long qualifier again, right? It after we play these first six games, we're gonna have a year until we play the next rounds of six games, and that's gonna be a key. The teams that are not bringing new players, those are teams that are gonna that are gonna struggle. Um, so. That's when we're going to have the answer. Like, who is able to keep the level high for a year? So tough to predict in Comebol, to be honest with you. Um, Jaime, I want to thank you for your time. I think it's it's been great insight into what Ecuador is going through and what the, what's going to happen in this campaign. I want to give this last minute for your closing thoughts and for you to also let the people know where they can find you and follow you and, and check your work out. Um, all my social media, I was lucky enough to get them in the same name. So all my social media is at Jaime F. Macias. So that's where, where all my nonsense content is posted. So, um, I'll be around there. Perfect. You guys heard it here first. This is Ecuador. We have the nine other nations coming up. So don't forget to comment, like, subscribe. We'll see y'all soon.